successful harvesting is the time for celebration, to plan new family events, to build a new house and to pay back farmer debts. Harvesting marks the end of a production cycle and the end of a growing season. In earlier agriculture societies, survival through the winter period was dependent on a successful harvest. And in modern production systems, the successful harvest means providing more commodities for commercial markets. The harvesting efficiency which aims at reducing the harvesting losses has improved considerably due to mechanization uh, but still the weather conditions dictate the success or failure of harvest operation. This video lecture on harvesting and marketing is divided into two parts. In the first part I'll discuss about harvesting such as what is the best time for harvesting, when is a crop mature, how do we harvest crops, uh, how do we harvest grain and forage crops, what is difference between ripening and maturity and how to induce or hasten the harvest maturity. In the second part, I will discuss the concept of market and marketing, the main sources of risks in crop production and how to avoid them. The overall aim of harvesting is to improve harvesting efficiency by reducing the harvest losses. So a crop must be harvested at right time when the economic part is at its peak quality and quantity by right method to reduce the harvest losses and must be stored in a right way. There are a number of factors which determine the best time to harvest. But four of them are most critical. The economic part, the utilization, the storage method and the crop maturity. The economic part is the important part of a crop for it for which a crop is grown. That is the marketable yield. It can be grain, leaves, roots or stem. At a certain time there is partitioning process in plants and repartitioning of assimilates from economic part to the non-economic parts significantly reduces the quality and quantity of crop. Therefore, it is critical to harvest the crop when the economic part for which a crop is grown is at its peak quality or quantity. Second factor is the utilization. The same plant or the same plant part uh, can be used in a number of ways. It can be, for example, alfalfa can be utilized for forage purpose or for seed production. Likewise, maize can be used for making silage or for harvesting grains. So the purpose of utilization also determines the time of harvest. The third factor is storage. Uh, before a crop is shipped for market, it has to be stored for some time. So uh, the time required for storage also determines the best time for harvest. So it is important to harvest the crop uh, at a moisture content when it can be uh, stored for some time without deteriorating its quality. The fourth important factor is crop maturity. A crop harvest is harvested when it is mature. 
there are different operational technical and scientific definitions of crop maturity but three of them are used uh, widely physiological maturity harvest maturity and storage maturity physiological maturity is when the crop or the economic part has accumulated maximum dry matter for example the loss of uh, green colors by pods of soya bean or when the sunflower head had turns yellow from green harvest maturity is when the product or economic product is at its peak quality and quantity for example in rice 20 to 22% moisture content is considered suitable for harvesting in situations where post harvest storage facilities are not available the crop is harvested at a stage when it can be directly stored in storage places the crop is uh, dried to a certain safe moisture content for example 14% moisture content for grains there are two basic ways in which crops are harvested by grazing animals or by humans animals graze in pastures uh, which are the fields seeded to forage for grazing or browsing by livestock animals can also graze in range or rangelands and sometimes farmer allow them to graze in their field crops for example chickpea or wheat harvesting by humans also has two methods manual and mechanized manual harvesting can be done by hand picking such as hand picking of fruits and vegetables or by using hand tools such as sickle or scythe manual harvesting is a tedious and labor intensive job but it is feasible under certain conditions manual harvesting is preferred where family labor is abundant or hired labor is cheap in situations where the commodity price is high for example fruits and vegetables and where a farmer needs other parts of the plant other than the economic part for example in wheat harvesting uh, in order to maximize the amount of uh, wheat straw farmers uh, small scale farmers prefer to harvest by sickle and manual harvesting is also feasible on uh, smaller scale for example cutting fodder for uh, daily feeding the mechanized cutting also has two types in one type uh, the whole plant is cut for example wheat soya bean rice etc and in other type only the economic part is removed for example picking in cotton mechanized harvesting can also be divided into one step harvesting for example using combines multi step harvesting for example cutting the economic part along with other parts and leaving in the field for curing or drying for example alfalfa or it could be multi stage harvesting for example wind row all grain crops can be harvested using a combine harvester the term combine is used because this machine combines different operations such as cutting gathering threshing and cleaning a self propelled combine for small harvest uh, consists of different parts for example the gathering head brings the grain and straw into the combine 
the cylinder and concaves thresh the grain and the screens fan and straw walkers separate the grain from the straw this straw is then expelled from the back of the combine in the earlier days of agriculture all crops were harvested manually by hand the cut grain was later picked up by hand and placed on a raised place where it was threshed by animals and later it was uh, taken to a stationary thresher the threshing was uh, mechanized and in 1800 manual harvesting was replaced by the reaper and the reaper were later modified to allow operators to collect and bind the stalks of grain together by using binders so in pakistan still reapers and reaper binding machines are also frequently used where wheat straw is of importance to farmers forages can be grazed by animals in pastures or rangelands or uh, forages can be mechanically harvested as hay or silage forages are vegetative portions of plants which are used for livestock feed and often they do not contain mature seed maize sorghum and small grain crops harvested for silage contain immature grains the goal of forage harvesting is to maximize retention of the forage nutrients growing in the field however field losses as high as 25% may happen especially for hay crops which are slowly dried in the field wind rowing is a method of multi stage harvesting in which the crop is cut gathered and left in the field for a period to undergo additional ripening before being picked up for threshing the term windrow are so named because they catch the wind and aid drying standing forage contains from 80% to as much as 90% moisture content and must be dried to less than 20% for safe long term storage field drying normally takes from 2 to 4 days depending on the weather conditions depending on the crop some specialized machinery or equipment is used for harvesting and threshing for example uh, cotton is harvested from the mature open balls in developed countries the specialized cotton pickers are available similarly for maize crop uh, pickers are available for picking the ears in crops where the underground part is important for example sugar beet or potato specialized diggers are used in addition to the specialized equipment there are some specialized techniques also for different crops for example curing of the tobacco curing is the preparation of harvested products for handling and storage that involves drying and in field crops like uh, fiber flax instead of drying the process of retting is done in which the harvested crop is left in the field uh, to be decayed by humid conditions or rainfall so retting is the process of separating fibers from the stem in flax so in this way different equipments tools and techniques are used for uh, proper harvesting of the crop so as to reduce the harvest losses and improve the overall harvesting efficiency in horticulture maturity and ripening are considered as two separate process maturity is the final stage of development that must take place when the fruit is still attached to the plant so this is also called as physiological maturity generally the edible fleshy portion is not uh, softened yet and the biochemical changes that take place during the process of maturity are cell enlargement storage of carbohydrates 
accumulation of aroma and taste producing substances and decrease in acidity. Ripening of fruit involves certain biochemical changes which take place in the fruit after full maturation. Ripening may happen before or after the harvest of fruit. In, during ripening, the softening of edible portion is near completion and fruit's characteristic aroma and sweet juices increase. Two more terms uh, are used, climacteric fruits and non-climacteric fruits. Climacteric fruits continue to ripen after being detached from the plant, for example mango, guava, whereas non-climacteric fruits ripen on the plant, for example citrus, grapes. In certain situations, the harvesting process is hastened or induced. Because at physiological maturity, a plant has accumulated maximum dry matter. So at this time, in order to prevent the crop from being subject to the vagaries of weather, sometimes the uh, early harvesting is induced. For this purpose, defoliants or desiccates are used or topping is done. Defoliants cause the leaf drop, for example, in during mechanical picking of cotton in order to reduce the vegetative material a defoliate is sprayed uh, so as to cause leaf drop in cotton which reduces the vegetative material during the final harvesting process and also prevents the fiber from uh, tainting with the green color of leaves. Some desiccants, for example, endothel are used for rapid drying of hay under field conditions. And topping is done to reduce the vegetative material pre-harvest. This slows the photosynthetic activity and hastens the drying of economic parts, for example, pods. Under field conditions, some of the common symptoms for harvesting or harvest maturity are in wheat, this is the disappearance of green color or complete drying and yellowing of plants. In rice, uh, the grain moisture content of 20 to 22 percent. In maize, the grain moisture content of 15 percent and the complete drying of cob sheath. In sugarcane, drying of the lower leaves. In chickpea, when 80 to 90 percent pods are mature. In rapeseed, when the stem and pods turn brown. And in sorghum, maize and pearl millet grown for fodder purpose at 50 percent flowering, the crop is harvested. And in alfalfa, before flowering, when stems are still soft, that is first cutting about three months after sowing. Farm is a place where we raise crops or livestock or both crops and livestock. And farming is the business of operating a farm. Since farming is a business and the sole objective of a business is to earn profit. So commercial farming or commercial farms must consider the market of a produce or product. So in commercial farming, the most important factor for deciding what to produce, where to produce, how to produce and what quality to produce depends upon the market or marketing. The word market is derived from a Latin word marketus, which means merchandise or trade or a place where business is conducted. Marketing 
takes place in market which is defined as all the possible buyers and sellers of a product or commodity. So market is any place where persons assemble for the sale or purchase of commodities intended for satisfying human wants. Economically interpreted, the term market is not limited to a place but to a commodity or commodities and sellers are free to interact with each other. The market participants who buy to consume are called consumers. Market is the sphere within which the price determining forces of demand and supply operate. And marketing is full of decisions. Sellers decide what to produce, where to produce and how much to produce and where to sell. Whereas buyers also make similar decisions. These decision makers are organized into individual businesses called firms uh, that may belong to one family such as on, on farms or hundreds or thousands of uh, individuals working in large corporations. The essential components of a market are the existence of a good or commodity, although physical presence at a particular time is not necessary. Second is the existence of buyers and sellers. Third component is the business relationship or communication between buyers and sellers. And fourth is the demarcation of area such as a region, a country or the whole world. Marketing is the performance of business activities that direct the flow of goods and services from the producers to consumers. From the macro perspective agriculture marketing is the performance of all business activities involved in the forward flow of food and fiber from producers to consumers and from the micro perspective agri marketing is the performance of business activities directing the forward flow of food and services to customers and accomplishing the objectives of the firm Field crop producers produce crops for food, feed, fiber purpose and they can use it on the farm, in the home or sold or a combination of these uses. A cash crop is one that is grown mainly or solely for sale off the farm. For example, cotton, sugarcane and tobacco. Commodity is any economic good that may be marketed by almost everyone. For example, large acreage volume crops, for example, wheat, rice, soybean, or small acreage specialty crops, for example, tomato or potato. The main objectives of marketing are number one, to provide satisfaction to the consumers. Number two, to increase the demand of product. Number three, to provide better quality product to the customers. Number four, to create goodwill for the organization. And number five, to generate profitable sales volume. The agricultural commodities have certain characteristics such as perishability, for example, fruits, Flowers or vegetables have high moisture content and cannot be stored uh, for longer periods. By seasonality, there are different crops for winter season, for summer season. Bulkiness of the produce, large variation in the produce, uncertain and irregular supplies because uh, the crop production is affected by weather conditions, by certain biotic and abiotic factors. Supply of agriculture produce is not always sure. And other characteristics are scattered production and inadequate processing facilities.
the a sound uh, marketing plan should have four uh, characteristics number one to identify the market and outcomes from the previous year's record number two to ascertain the market for a particular commodity number three is setting price and risk and number four is developing a market plan farming is a business and a risky one i have heard a farmer saying that we do not bury the seeds into soil we bury our currency notes into the soil that are subject to the vagaries of weather conditions and hostile government policies so risk is any as uncertainty that affects an individual's well-being in crop production there are different sources of risks such as production risks price or market risks in institutional risks Uh, personal risks and financial risks if we talk about production risks crop production is dependent on a number of factors that is genotypic management and environment crop yield is the amount of grain or any other marketable produce at an agreed moisture content per unit of land area harvested according to case debit crop yield can be described at three different levels number 1 is the potential yield that is determined by crop genetics and environmental conditions number 2 is the limited yield that is determined by water and nitrogen limitations and number 3 is the actual yield that in addition to water and nitrogen limitations is constrained by biotic factors such as weeds pathogens insect pests rodents birds etc the difference between actual yield and potential yield is called as yield gap so crop production is dependent on environmental factors management factors genotypic factors as well as the political factors second main risk factor is the price or market risk for example the prices of uh, critical inputs such as seeds or pesticides uh, or the contractual labor may rise uh, at the time of sowing whereas at the time of uh, harvesting the prices of commodities which farmer is going to sell uh, may go down so such risks often hurt the farmers third is the institutional risks or the government policies or the political factors for example government allowing or disallowing subsidy for a particular commodity or putting a ban on a critical pesticide so such factors also uh, affect the farmer's profitability the personal risks uh, could be injury or sickness or death or any other personal matter that affects the the well-being of farmer and last is the financial risks farmers often Uh, take loans from banks and the increased uh, uh, interest rates can reduce their profitability or in case of crop failures they are unable to pay back debts and often have to face uh, the courts in order to minimize these different sources of risks in crop production some of the proposed approaches are the enterprise diversification 
minimizing the role of middlemen or rt signing contracts with firms crop insurance uh, maintaining financial reserves by farmers and looking for off farm employment